Welcome, and thanks for joining us for this presentation of the GetLegit.org Guide to Safe Natural Relief, Part 1 of the GetLegit.org Education and Enlightenment Series. Do you suffer from chronic ailments like arthritis, chronic illness, cancer, headaches or migraines, chronic pain, lack of appetite, depression, or fatigue? Would your quality of life dramatically improve if you found relief from things like muscle spasms, inflammation, insomnia, anxiety, intraocular pressure, or convulsions and seizures? Are you tired of taking pharmaceutical drugs that just mask the problem? Do you feel like most of your prescriptions just make you feel worse? There is an answer, and it's one that the big pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know about. And why don't they want you to know about this? Because we're talking about a plant. Yes, a natural growing plant that has over a thousand varieties, hundreds of uses, multiple ingestion options, and no, that's right, no harmful side effects. A plant that is 100% natural, 100% safe, and 100% effective, scientifically proven to help relieve things like headaches and migraines, energize and stimulate, reduce pain and the awareness of pain, stimulate appetite, support the immune system, work as an expectorant and decongestant, help reduce depression, relax muscles, relieve muscle spasms, reduce inflammation, reduce anxiety and stress, reduce nausea, reduce intraocular pressure, help aid sleep, act as an anti-convulsant, and help reduce seizure frequency. Now you're probably thinking, well that sounds wonderful, but if there really is such an amazing plant out there that does all of these amazing things, why haven't I heard of this? Well, the answer is actually simple. Your health problems are their profits. Pharmaceutical companies are more interested in profit than in your well-being. Have you ever wondered how all those drugs out there with a long list of dangerous, even fatal side effects make it to consumers? Well, it might interest you to know that the Federal Drug Administration is controlled by pharmaceutical company executives, and these same executives control the approval and testing process for new drugs. It might also interest you to know that doctors are often paid by pharmaceutical company representatives to prescribe that company's drugs to patients like you. Now, this isn't to say that all pharmaceutical drugs are bad. Some are necessary treatment options and are even vital to your health. But did you know that most painkillers prescribed today are more dangerous than heroin? According to ABC News, the use of Vicodin, which is the most popular pain relief drug in the country, has grown dramatically from 112 million doses prescribed in 2006 to over 131 million doses prescribed in 2012. Did you also know that the United States makes up only 4.6% of the world's population, but consumes 80% of its opioids, and 99% of the world's hydrocodone, which is the opiate found in Vicodin? Now, opioids are essentially legal heroin, according to Lewis Nelson, who served as an FDA panel to revise the risk evaluation and mitigation strategy. Accidental overdoses from Vicodin and other narcotic pain relievers kill more people than car accidents in 17 states, according to Dr. Thomas Frieden, director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Pharmaceutical painkillers are also responsible for more deaths than crack in the 1980s and black tar heroin in the 1970s combined. Now let's get back to 100% safe, natural relief options. Yes, we're talking about a plant, an amazing plant that grows nearly everywhere on the globe. A plant that has a thousand or more varieties, hundreds of uses, multiple ingestion options, and no harmful side effects. A plant that is 100% natural, 100% safe, and 100% effective. A plant that is scientifically proven to help relieve headaches and migraines, energize and stimulate, reduce pain and the awareness of pain, help stimulate appetite, support the immune system, work as an expectorant and a decongestant, 
help reduce depression, relax muscles, relieve muscle spasms, reduce inflammation, reduce anxiety and stress, help reduce nausea, reduce intraocular pressure, aid with sleep, work as an anti-convulsant, and help reduce seizure frequency. So what is this wonder plant called? Cannabis. Cannabis is a naturally evolved plant that has over a thousand varieties, hundreds of uses and applications, multiple ingestion options, and no harmful side effects. That's right, it's 100% natural, 100% safe, and 100% effective. Cannabis contains scientifically proven elements that relieve headaches and migraines, energize and stimulate, reduce pain and the awareness of pain, stimulate appetite, support the immune system, work as an expectorant and decongestant, help reduce depression, relax muscles, relieve muscle spasms, reduce inflammation, reduce anxiety and stress, reduce nausea, reduce intraocular pressure, aid with sleep, and work as an anti-convulsant and help reduce frequency of seizures. Now let's go through some frequently asked questions about cannabis. One of the most common questions we hear is, isn't cannabis illegal? Well, the answer is no. The Compassionate Use Act of 1996 and Senate Bill 420 provide access and legal protection to California patients who have been recommended cannabis by a physician. Today, nearly half the states in America have a medical cannabis program. And while the FDA has not approved clinical trials or testing yet, it hasn't stopped the United States government from issuing and selling a cannabis compound related patent to a pharmaceutical company in New York as of 2011. Another common question is what if I can't smoke due to health issues? Well good news, there are a myriad of alternative and smokeless ways to use cannabis. From edibles and infused products to tinctures, capsules, vaporizers, and more. Another common question is, what if I don't want to get high or experience the euphoric sensation commonly associated with cannabis use? Well, good news again. There are several non-psychoactive varieties of cannabis currently being developed that deliver the same relief and benefits but that do not contain the same ratio of psychoactive elements. While cannabis does have some side effects, if used properly, it is not shown to have any negative or harmful side effects to your health. Another important fact is that there is a 0% fatality rate associated with cannabis, which means that no one in recorded history has fatally overdosed from using cannabis. Is cannabis safe? The answer is yes. If used properly, cannabis has next to zero negative or harmful side effects to the user, which means that it is incorrectly listed as a Schedule I drug by the U.S. government. Schedule I drugs are said to have no medicinal benefits and to have extremely addictive capabilities. Nothing could be further from the truth. Cannabis has almost no addictive capabilities, but does have hundreds of positive medicinal benefits. Cannabis is not a gateway drug. Using cannabis will not lead to the use of harder or more dangerous drugs. If anything, cannabis is a gateway back towards natural, safe relief and away from dangerous, harmful drugs. Another important question is what if I can't afford my medications or my insurance won't cover cannabis? Well, there's still good news. Cannabis is a plant that thrives naturally in nearly every corner of the globe. It can be cultivated indoors as well as outdoors and can be harvested multiple times per year. Anyone can master the art and science of gardening with a little research and effort. Plus, with our Grow Your Own Guide, it's easy to get started. Now let's go through Cannabis 101. Everything from the history of cannabis to getting started as a patient, legal concerns and resources, active components of cannabis, understanding your needs, understanding names and genetics, keeping track, 
quality control, and ways to use cannabis. Cannabis throughout history. For thousands of years, man has used marijuana. It has played a role medicinally and industrially, traceable as far back as the 28th century BC. Coincidentally, almost every region of the globe has indigenous or land-raised families of marijuana which have naturally evolved there. From the ancient Chinese, Greeks, Europeans, Persians, Romans, and Africans, to King Solomon, Abraham Lincoln, and even Queen Elizabeth, almost every civilization throughout history was known to use or trade marijuana in some form. Cannabis is a holy sacrament to the Hindu and Rastafari people of the world, part of the yin-yang philosophy, and even a staple of the original Karma Sutra. In fact, nearly every major religion has some historical reference to marijuana. As trade, travel, and empire expanded, so did the use and reach of cannabis, and before long it was an everyday commodity worldwide. Hemp, the fiber generally stripped from the stock of male plants, has been one of nearly every ancient and modern nation's industries, with uses ranging from rope and textiles to paper, oils, clothing, and more. Even America's founding fathers were known for having vast and luscious hemp fields nestled among their plantations. As man began discovering the many uses for the plant, he soon also discovered its medicinal qualities. Ancient medical texts show how to use cannabis-based anesthetics for complex surgeries, and it has been documented for an array of everyday ailments like pain relief to headaches, insomnia, depression, and menstrual cramps, used by royalty and peasants alike, much like over-the-counter medicines of today. As long as there have been users of cannabis, there have been those who oppose it. Most governments throughout history, however, have agreed that the medicinal, industrial, and overall positive effects of cannabis far outweighed any negative impact, if any, that it might have. Only in the last century or so has it come under any legal scrutiny here in America, and with the United States' legal complexities, there are a number of reasons and decisions which have led to cannabis becoming illegal. The most well-known modern legal disputes over cannabis in America are traceable back to migrant Mexican workers throughout Texas and California, as well as African and Indian groups, mainly in large cities like New York, San Francisco, or New Orleans, who openly used and or cultivated it. In 1912, the idea of putting international restrictions on cannabis emerged at the International Opium Conference, and in 1915, California criminalized it. Marijuana's opponents launched a massive campaign against the horrors of marijuana, and while it was largely based on false propaganda, it still has popular influence in America today. Despite the testimony and efforts of groups like the American Medical Association, in 1937, the marijuana transfer tax was levied, but because of a legal loophole, farmers could not obtain the necessary licenses and the industry as a whole was crippled. Now let's recap. Cannabis was used by almost every ancient civilization, dating back as far as 10,000 years. It was used by royalty, the founding fathers, and peasants alike. Hemp was among the world's largest industrial commodities until the 20th century when it was illegalized for political, racial, and monetary gain. Today, nearly half of the states in the U.S. and seven countries internationally have medicinal cannabis and or industrial hemp programs. Today, marijuana is illegal under federal law in America. However, individual states and voters have the right to approve access to marijuana as a medicine. In 1996, California voters passed an initiative, and now nearly half of the states in the country, as well as Washington, D.C., have a medical cannabis program. Some states have even decriminalized the possession of small amounts. Countries like Holland and Germany have long adopted policies of tolerance toward cannabis, and in plant form it is available as a prescription in Canada, Italy, the Netherlands, and Spain. 
synthetic forms are being developed in America and elsewhere by major pharmaceutical companies. In 2010, the California voters very nearly passed a bill that would tax and legalize marijuana in California. In 2012, voters in Washington and Colorado approved similar initiatives. With so many questions surrounding cannabis, we believe many can be answered by looking to the past. One thing we do know is this. It's up to us as patients to help determine the future of cannabis. Now let's talk about the active components of cannabis. Cannabis has several active, unique chemical compounds known as cannabinoids. The human body is naturally pre-programmed with cannabinoid receptors. THC, or tetrahydrocannabinol, notably the Delta-9, is the psychoactive compound which causes the euphoric or high feeling that is generally associated with marijuana by most patients. THC has analgesic effects, neuroprotective and anti-inflammatory qualities, can help stimulate appetite, relieve nausea, and more. CBD, or cannabidiol, is another physiologically active compound within cannabis which reduces the psychoactive effects of THC. With qualities ranging from anti-inflammatory to anti-anxiety, anti-arthritic, analgesic, anti-convulsive, and more. CBD works similarly to THC compounds, but has actually been shown to modulate its psychoactive effects. Strains rich in CBD are less common than THC-rich strains, and many are just now being developed and released specifically for the medical marijuana community as an alternative to psychoactive medication. THCA and CBDA are anti-inflammatory agents only available when consumed orally and the plant has not been heated beforehand. CBN is a degradation product of THC and generally isn't found in fresh flowers. Another important group of cannabinoids are called terpenes. Terpenes modify the effects of THC and impact the medicinal effect of the strain. They are also responsible for some of the smell and taste characteristics. Pinenes have a pine odor and work as a bronchiodilator that opens the lungs to more THC absorption. It increases focus, self-satisfaction, and energy. Caryophylline, a sweet, woody clove taste responsible for anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective effects through CB2 receptor activation. Linalool is floral smelling, is believed to provide some anti-cancer effects, and is known to cause severe sedation. Limonene has a citrus scent and may possess anti-cancer, antibacterial, antifungal, and anti-depression abilities. Myrcene affects the intake of THC by brain cells to increase the overall effects of THC when ingested together. Now let's talk about some common side effects. Users of cannabis have reported these and similar side effects which generally last one to three hours. In some cases, especially with overuse, these effects can last up to 10 hours or more and can be very intense. So please use caution and start with small amounts of cannabis when determining your appropriate dosage. Some of the common side effects include short-term memory disruption, slowed reaction time, anxiety or paranoia, altered perception, increased appetite, tiredness or laziness, increased heart rate, dry eyes and or mouth, and euphoria. So let's recap. The unique compounds found in cannabis are known as cannabinoids. The human body is pre-programmed with cannabinoid receptors. THC, or tetrahydrocannabinol, creates the high or euphoric feeling generally associated with cannabis. 
and has incredible analgesic, anti-inflammatory, and neuroprotective qualities. CBD, or cannabidiol, is the physiologically active compound which works similarly to THC but actually modulates the psychoactive effects. Terpenes modify the effects of THC and are responsible for smell and taste characteristics. Side effects are mild, non-hazardous, and have a 0% fatality rate. Special thanks to the workshop for providing information on the active components of cannabis. The workshop is an independent chromatography testing lab that promotes the testing and research of medical cannabis. Please check out theworkshop.com to learn more. That's the W-E-R-C shop.com. Cannabis does not have to be smoked in order to obtain its medicinal value. There are a variety of alternative use methods which we'll go over here as well as smoking. Smoking. Cannabis is generally smoked either in plant or concentrate form with specially designed pipes, bongs, water bubblers, and other devices or rolled with special rolling papers into joints or blunts, etc. Inhalation of smoke and or vapor has the fastest effect on your body, but you should still wait at least 10 to 15 minutes to determine the full effect it has had on you. Vaporization Specially designed vaporizers heat cannabis to the point where cannabinoids are released into the airways and lungs of the user, but the rest of the plant material is largely unaffected. Vaporization releases cannabinoids to the user without many of the harmful elements created by burning plant material. Studies also show that some vaporizers produce little to no carcinogenic or cancer-causing effects and are much more recommended by physicians versus smoking. Edibles Cannabis can be combined with almost any type of food or drink. There are multiple methods, the most common being to heat plant material with ordinary butter, which releases the plant's cannabinoids into the butter's fatty oils, which the user can then ingest. Edibles are available as foods, drinks, candies, baked goods, and beyond. Please beware, though, edibles are known for having a much different onset of their effects versus smoking or vaporizing. If you use an edible, start with no more than one half of the recommended dosage. And please wait up into an entire hour to determine the full effect it has had on you. Topicals. Salves, lotions, and ointments can be applied and absorbed directly into the skin and make great relief for localized or joint pain. Please make sure to test for negative skin reactions on a small area first, just in case. Concentrates. Concentrates are made by separating THCs or CBDs from plant material, then refining and compressing them, or concentrating it, into another form. This is done with a variety of processes, from screen bags and ice, to high-tech CO2 extractors. Concentrates have a very high ratio of active chemicals to overall weight, compared to even the most potent marijuana buds, making them very powerful. Please be careful when medicating with concentrates. Tinctures and liquid concentrates are made by chemically extracting THCs and CBDs from cannabis plant material, usually with an alcohol-based substance. Tinctures are generally taken as a sublingual or mixed with some food or drink to mask the taste, which can be a little bitter. Gel caps are also available. Synthetic forms Pharmaceutical companies have recently discovered how to recreate the effects of marijuana with drugs like Marinol that are only available through your doctor and are used by an inhaler, pill capsule, or other forms. Please use extreme caution when considering synthetic forms of cannabis, as these are the most dangerous forms available. In fact, the only form of cannabis that is substantially harmful to the human body is a synthetic form developed by a pharmaceutical lab. So let's recap. Cannabis does not have to be smoked in order to obtain its medicinal value. 
Vaporization releases cannabinoids into the lungs with little or no carcinogenic effects. Edibles can be made using almost any type of food or drink and infusing it with cannabinoids. Topical implements can help with localized pain management. Tincture and capsule forms are made from concentrated cannabinoids. Synthetic pharmaceutical versions like Marinol are available but are dangerous. Use extreme caution with synthetic forms of cannabis. Please use natural cannabis if possible, not synthetic versions. Getting what you need. There are over a thousand different kinds of cannabis, so at first it can be tough knowing which strains work best for you. This section is designed to help you decide which strains to use based on your medical needs. Every strain of cannabis falls into one of three basic categories based on the overall effects it gives. Indica. Indica dominant strains produce a heavy, lazy, or sedative effect. They're commonly used for symptoms like pain, lack of appetite, and insomnia. Sativa. Sativa dominant strains produce euphoric, energizing, or uplifting type effects. They're commonly used for symptoms like depression, pain, or stress relief. Hybrid. Hybrid strains have more balanced indica and sativa characteristics and are often known as 50-50 or all-around strains. Most modern strains have complex family trees. While some are 100% indica or 100% sativa, most are technically hybrids that are either indica or sativa dominant. Because of the unique ratios of cannabinoids and terpenes, most strains have at least one noticeable secondary effect. We call this an edge, ranging from hard to soft. A hard-edged cannabis strain produces more racy or anxious effects, whereas a soft-edged strain produces more calming and or focused effects. So let's recap. There are over 1,000 varieties or strains of cannabis available today, with countless more under development by growers across the world. All 1,000 plus varieties fall into one of three categories, sativa, indica, or hybrid, based on their overall effect type. Each strain has unique effects, as well as smell and taste characteristics, caused by unique ratios of cannabinoids and terpenes. You can check out sites like leafly.com to learn more about specific cannabis strains. Understanding Names and Genetics Cannabis strains can be named anything for any reason, but are usually related to the genetic parents, overall effects, smell, taste, yield, breeder, origin, growth medium, and or appearance. Cannabis strains can be interbred or crossed. Nature has evolved several land race strains, which are the original building blocks for all modern strains. Dominant and recessive traits are passed down to the offspring seeds, establishing a plant's genotype, just like you and your parents. Breeders then raise and select whichever offspring incorporate the phenotypic expressions they desire. If you have brothers or sisters, you've seen how the same parents can produce multiple offspring that reflect different traits. Offspring that produce a combined effect superior to either parent is said to show hybrid vigor. This is how many of today's super strains are created. Breeders attempt to stabilize strains for production and reproduction through a complex back-crossing process. If they cannot, those genetics will only be available by taking cuttings from the original plant called clones. Clones can preserve the genetics of that plant and be taken from almost any plant and are a very common way to reproduce or preserve genetics. For example, let's say a fictional breeder develops a strain he calls Lemon Kush by crossing a land race strain from the Kush region of Pakistan called Pakistani Kush with a Thai land race which possesses a very lemony taste and smell called Lemon Thai. 
This breeder selected offspring that mostly incorporated indica-dominant traits of the Pakistani Kush, but that also possessed very strong lemon smell and taste, as well as some sativa characteristics. This breeder's cross also yielded two other phenotypic expressions, including a sativa-dominant strain, which he calls lemon zing, as well as a hybrid strain he calls lemonade. It is important to keep track of which cannabis strains work the best for you and your medical needs, as well as any specific strains that don't work for you. Standard weights are based on grams, ounces, and pounds. The most commonly used weights by patients are grams, eighth of ounces, which are 3.5 grams, and quarter ounces, which equals 7 grams. A half ounce is equal to 14 grams, an ounce is 28 grams, a quarter pound, or 4 ounces, is equal to 112 grams, a half pound, 8 ounces, is equal to 224 grams, and a pound, 16 ounces, is equal to 448 grams. So let's recap. Cannabis strains can be selectively bred to achieve desired dominant and recessive traits. Land race strains are naturally evolved and found across the globe. Genetics can be stabilized through back crossing and seed production and replicated by cloning. It is important to keep track of which cannabis strains work the best for you and your medical needs. Standard weights are based on grams, ounces, and pounds. Quality control. Not all cannabis is created equally. The names and genetics of a strain only determine the effects that strain will have, not the quality or potency of the final product. The most important factor in the overall quality of cannabis is the grower and their process. The same strain, grown in different conditions, will produce very different results. Some growers and collectives have turned to laboratories that can test their cannabis for chemical content as well as cleanliness using gas and or liquid chromatography. Patients can then see the results in the bud room and factor them into their decision-making process based on their medical needs. These tests show how much of a chemical compound is present and or available, and equally importantly, that your medicine is clean. As research in this field continues, patients can be aided in determining what will work the best for them based on actual chemical properties. This is a huge step towards legitimizing marijuana as a medicine. And while it is very important to know these values, there are other variables that determine potency and effect including factors like your personal body chemistry and your medical needs. Think of these test results not only as an excellent analysis and aid, but also as an overall reflection of the grower and their process. Trichomes, shaped like tiny crystals, trichomes are the glands where the majority of the THCs and CBDs are formed, mainly in the flower buds of female plants, in order to catch pollen from male plants as they go through their reproductive process. If no pollen is present, the female plant will devote more of its energy towards oil and resin gland production, whereas if pollen does become present, and the plant devotes its energy to producing seeds. Thus, Seedless or Sinsemia flowers generally contain more active cannabinoids than those that have been pollinated. Properly dried and cured cannabis should feel lightly moist, even sticky to the touch, but not soaking wet. A good rule of thumb is that the stem should snap when stressed. Bud density will vary depending on strain and growth factors. In general, a dense, hardy flower insinuates a healthy, well-grown plant. Cannabis should smell clean and crisp, regardless of the strain type or fragrance, not that of mildew or alfalfa, hay, chemical pesticides, or fertilizers. Cannabis should burn smoothly and reduce to a fine gray ash. Profuse crackling or popping of burned cannabis may be the result of unwanted chemicals and or pests. Most connoisseurs agree, 
it seems best not to ingest contaminated cannabis. Because no regulatory body exists, it is up to the growers, collectives, and patients to assess quality control for themselves. So let's recap. Not all cannabis is created equally. Different growers will produce different results even when using the same genetic stock. Chromatography testing allows chemical analysis as well as cleanliness screening. The majority of THCs and CBDs are formed in glands known as trichomes. Properly processed cannabis is dried and cured, has correct density, and a clean, crisp aroma, regardless of fragrance. Beware of contaminated cannabis. Remember, no regulatory body exists in the medical cannabis field. It is up to the growers, collectives, and patients to assess quality control for themselves. In order to gain access to medical cannabis, you must obtain a recommendation from a physician. Once you have your recommendation, you need to find your medication. GetLegit.org helps patients find doctors and collectives in their area with interactive map listings, official reviews, and more. Sites like Leafly.com help patients research and track most cannabis strains available today. Magazines like Treating Yourself are a great way to find resources, learn more, and are available at most literature retailers. In order to help your doctor determine if cannabis is right for you, remember to take any pertinent medical records with you to your consultation. Remember if you ever visit a collective or use a delivery service to have the original valid copy of your recommendation as well as a valid state ID at all times. If you need help finding a collective, delivery service, or a doctor, remember to use getlegit.org. Medical Marijuana and Legal Concerns Legal issues surrounding medical cannabis are very complex. Different laws and guidelines exist at federal, state, and local levels. It is your responsibility as a patient to know the laws in your area and to abide by them. Here are some resources to help you get started. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. NORMAL serves as an informational resource to the national media on marijuana-related stories, providing a perspective to offset the anti-marijuana propaganda from the government. Lobby state and federal legislators in support of reform legislation, publishes a regular newsletter, posts, along with the NORMAL Foundation, an informative website and an annual conference, and serves as the umbrella group for a national network of citizen activists committed to ending marijuana prohibition and legalizing marijuana. Americans for Safe Access ASA is one of the most important legal and political resources available to patients. Their goal is to overcome political and legal barriers by creating policies that improve access to medical cannabis for patients and researchers. SafeAccessNow.org includes an in-depth legal guidebook along with current issues, medical, historical info, and is very active in marijuana legislature. GetLegit.org is not affiliated with nor funded by these organizations, nor does ASA or Normal hold any responsibility for the views and facts expressed herein. We canisaurs do, however, use and appreciate them as resources and think you may benefit as well. This guide is just an informational synopsis. There is simply too much information to try and list here. This information is not legal advice, nor does it hold any legal value in court. So let's recap. Cannabis must be recommended for use by a licensed physician. This recommendation and the optional state ID program allow individuals access to medicinal cannabis. Use getlegit.org to find a physician that specializes in cannabis-based treatment options. Magazines like Treating Yourself offer more information and resources. Medicinal cannabis is available in several states, but is still a legal gray area. There are different statutes that apply when it comes to local, state, and federal law. Organizations like ASA and Normal can help you sort out legal concerns. 
getlegit.org also offers legal referrals and resources. Thanks for joining us for this presentation of Safe Natural Relief, brought to you by the getlegit.org Education and Enlightenment series. If cannabis sounds like a safe, natural relief option that you're interested in, become a getlegit.org member today. As a getlegit.org member, we'll help you find a physician in your area and set up a consultation to see if cannabis is right for you. You'll also receive our expert lifetime cannabis consultation services accompanied by our national industry locator. You'll also receive a free copy of Cannabis 101 and full access to our educational, legal, and self-cultivation resources. All this and more, now just $99 per year. Join us today and get on the path to safe, natural relief.